I'd venture to say Jeff might actually be able to drink this. <laughs> Shocker! Not gonna do it. What's going on, beer lovers? Welcome to another episode. I'm Jeff. And I'm Jacob. And I'm Justin. Today, we're here in Venice, California, home of Sun Surf and the Venice Boardwalk for Firestone Walker. This NorCal transplant has come down to SoCal and is doing their pilot program right here in Venice. So I don't know about you guys, but I'm tired of waiting. All right, we're you ready? ready? I'm ready. Let's, Let's have, have some beer. beer. Alright guys, so how exactly did the 805 come to the 310? Get ready, because here comes today's history lesson. So Firestone, obviously 805 Paso Robles, everyone knows about, about it if you've drank any type of ha, ha, uh, half a craft beer, half ass craft beer. But why are they here in Venice? Well, this place is called the Propagator, and the reason why, it's their pilot system. So this is the experiment, this is the lab, this is where they get to do all their funky and fresh creations. And it all dates back to two men, Firestone and Walker, their brother in, brothers-in-law, and their logo involves two animals, the bear and the lion, which represents the two very proud places that they're from, California and England. So when you get Firestone Walker beer, you're getting old world type of beers with some very classic California flavors. And if you guys are ready, let's get drinking. All right, so we just had a bunch of food right before recording this, and I am really stuffed because I don't eat as much. <laughs> Um, so naturally my first beer has got to be something really light, otherwise I'm going to explode. So you know what that means? It's Pivo time. And Pivo, for those of you who haven't heard uh, my already expressed love for this beer, it is a dry hop pilsner at 5.3% that Firestone's been making since the dawn of time. And goddamn, this is my Treasure Island beer. Desert Island beer? This is also what I would find in the Treasure Island as well. Because it's a treasure. It's a national fucking treasure. Treasure Pivo! Drink this beer! Yeah, I'm full, but I still have room for Pivo. It's like Jello, but without the fruit, just that you always have room for it. All right, guys. So the first beer I'm gonna try today is actually brewed right here at the Propagator. It's called the Brown Ale, and it's 5.8 percent. Now I'm a big fan of Brown Ales. Firestone Walker has put out quite a few Brown Ales that I've loved. Uh, so I'm excited to try it. Let's dig in. Cheers. It's got a pretty light body to it. I love that this actually has quite a nutty presence, but it also has like the chocolatey multi presence to it. It's almost like a uh, chocolate covered almond. Uh -huh. It's really, really good really refreshing uh, great way to start the day awesome beer all right guys first up i have the good old traditional hefeweizen 4.7 percent your tr traditional bavarian classic your banana your clove that's what you're expecting here and let's see how they do it cheers right off the right off the bat you get that good clove flavor a little bit of banana right on the back end it's crisp it's clean everything you want in a hefeweizen Perfect summer drinking beer, and made right here on the premises. You know, keep churning it out because this is a good one. One of my bit, one of my better half that I've had. 
So up next, I have Sour Opal, which is labeled as a American-style Guse beer. Um, I'm always a little leery when breweries call their beers a American-style Guse, just because Guse has that connotation of being very funky and ohy and weird and very Belgian. And American brewers have done some amazing sour beers, but they haven't always nailed Belgian sours. So when you say booze in your title, I'm like, all right, I hold you to a little higher standard now. But I do love regular Opal, which is a Saison from Firestone. So I'll probably like sour Opal, let's be real. <laughs> um, cheers. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's got a nice, almost sweet sourness. Like there's a hint of vanilla, but still oaky sour. The vanilla's probably coming from the oak now that I'm thinking about it. Um, I'm gonna try this guy though. Mmm, wow. So, if you've never had regular opal, it is a great saison to have. It's very mild, but it has all the right notes. And sour opal, honestly, is really hitting all the right goose notes. It probably could be a little bit more funk-tastic for me, um, but it has a lot of barrel character. There's a nice acidity to it. It's not gonna overwhelm your palate. Um, I'd venture to say Jeff might actually be able to drink this. <laughs> Shocker! Not gonna do it. Well guys, the next beer I'm trying is actually a special release here at the Propagator. It's called the Cashmere Pale Ale. It's 4.9%. It was, it actually uses the original recipe for, the, for their Easy Jack uh, Session IPA, but they only use one hop variety, Cashmere Hops. I haven't had a ton of Cashmere. I've had them from a few can releases. Uh, so I'm excited to see how I can pull that flavor out of this beer. They told me that they plan on brewing multiple batches of this beer with different hop varieties so people can kind of pick out those flavors and find them. So, cashmere hops, here we go. Cheers. Oh my goodness. Oh my God. Yep, that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> This is fantastic. On the nose, wow. On the nose, you just get straight up grapefruit, straight up tangerine. It reminds me of back when I was a kid, holding fresh grapefruits from the backyard and just smelling them. And oh my God, it, it's incredible. The aroma is incredible. The flavor is fantastic. It's light, it's refreshing. It's not overly malty. You still get that citrus punch right on the back end. Slight bitterness, but not overpowering. This is a super sessional beer. This is something that I would probably buy a whole pack of and take with me on like a camping trip. This is just hop juice at its finest, man. All right, guys, next up I have the Schwartz beer. 4.9%, you know, your dark lager. Uh, probably gonna be some hints of chocolate toffee. And let's see if the Schwartz is with me. Cheers. This is one mighty tasty dark helmet right here. It's nice and brown. It, you get good chocolatey notes. It's that roasted chocolate malt in there. It's a little bit bitter on the back end, but it's not like overly so. They have just enough of the hops. It's, it's one of those like traditional Bavarian, you know, fest beers. And, you know, the Schwartz is with this one. I like it. I like it a lot. So this next beer is gonna be unfiltered DBA. You can't come to Firestone and not have some classic beer like DBA. But I choose to have the unfiltered one because I'm wild and crazy. <laughs> um, but it, you just don't see the unfiltered version DBA out very often, so uh, when I saw it on the list, I was, could not get it. All right, so for those of you who don't know, DBA stands for Double Barrel Ale, and this is a British Pale Ale. So it's gonna be a little bit more of that malt forward, kind of caramel notes. You're gonna taste a lot more of what they brewed it with, those cereal grains, uh, as opposed to hops. So I, I'm, I'm a fan of DBA, but it's not something I get very often. Um, if I saw unfiltered DBA in my grocery stores or just wherever I frequent to buy beer more often, I would get this. It just has a little extra flavor to it. <laughs> it's almost hard to describe. You kind of have to have regular DBA and unfiltered side by side to kind of get 
what Unfiltered does. Um, maybe I should have worn that, but no. <laughs> uh, but Unfiltered, it's it's yeah, it's, it's got a little just a hint of oak. Not a full-on year barrel age tile of, of oak character, but it has enough to tell that it's been taken care of a little bit more than just brewed real quick, you know, and then uh, delivered straight to a keg. There's a little bit of that kind of aged quality to it. I really appreciate that. Thank you, Firestone, for making stuff like this. The next beer on the list is called the Nitro Merlin Milk Stout. This is 5.5%. It's obviously a milk stout. They add lactose in this um, and oats. I was told that this is one of their more popular beers, especially among women who may not be beer fans. So <laughs> that tells me it's probably going to be really sweet, really enjoyable. Let's dig in. Cheers. You know, it's kind of funny. I was expecting this to have a larger sweetness. It's not overly sweet. It's not like uh, like a super, super sweet milk stout. You get the, the chocolate malts on the nose. When you dig in, you get more of those chocolate malts. You also get a little bit of smokiness. The mouthfeel is super soft and pillowy from that lactose and the oats. I mean, it's just super, super light. But it's not overly sweet. I mean, this is just using the, the malts that were in this recipe. And, you know, it's quite enjoyable. And I mean, the fact that it's on nitro, it just glides on your tongue. This is fantastic. All right, guys, so uh, next up I have the Infernos. It's an 8.2% Imperial Rye IPA. Now, this is part of their uh, Leo versus Ursus series, and they're just known for great beers here in this you know, good rye IPA. Can't wait, man. Cheers. Ooh. You smell it. You're not expecting tropical, but that's what you're getting from this. Now, time to taste. Ooh. It's not a big punch. It's like a subtle wave. It's, it's tasty. It's drinkable. It's... You get these good hints of, like, tropical notes, a little bit of bitterness, and really really solid 8.2 you wouldn't think that i think it'd be like a six or seven just drinking it not knowing really really well done definitely my favorite beer so far and last but certainly not least is firestone walker's 21st anniversary ale um, which it runs you about 13.8 percent which contains mostly velvet merkin and good chunks of parabola and sticky monkey um, all of those are barrel aged beers this is a blend of a bunch of their barrel aged beers that they make throughout the year and I can't wait to try this because this is stuff that I drink as often as I can. <laughs> um, so cheers. Oh man, yeah, barrel character straight in the, in the nose. I mean, big bourbon and oak and just a little bit of that boozy sweetness. Mm, yeah, it's, despite being mostly um, a stout, there's quite a lot of like sticky, coffee malt caramel presence going on here. Um, I believe they did finish this off with Hal Dorado aged in rum barrels. Um, and it really, I know they just kind of skimmed it on the top in terms of the percentages of beer going in here. Man, but there's something really nice about this and I, even though there's only a hint of rum barrel aged thing going on, I feel like it comes through. Um, I mean, rum is a strong spirit character to begin with, but yeah, this is just, this is all sorts of fun. If you love barrel aged beers, definitely try Firestone Walker's Anniversary Series. They make them every year and they always come with a different blend and they're absolutely worth a try. They're delicious and very reasonably priced. <laughs> Cheers. Well guys, I'm down to the last beer and this one's gonna be a doozy. This is another beer from their Propagator Series and it's called the Walker's Reserve. It's 5.7%. And technically, it is a robust porter. Um, it actually has a little bit of a red tint to it, which is very interesting. Um, but anywho, let's give it a shot. Cheers. You know what this reminds me of is like a uh, ESB, um, extra special bitter. It's. It's bitter, it's got like roasty, toasty malts to it, kind of like burnt toast. Um, it, 
Like I hear porter and I think like smoky and oaky. I'm not getting a ton of oaky off this. I'm just getting that nice bitterness, moderate body. And again, like those uh, roasted like brown malts. So like toast, um, not really nuttiness. I'm trying to think what else. Like caramel, toffee, those kind of things. It's, it's a good beer. Um, probably not my favorite out of the group that I've tried, uh, but still pretty damn good. All right guys, my last beer here is the Breda Weiss. This is actually not done here in Venice. It's done at Barrel Works in Buellton, right outside of Santa Barbara. That's where they do all their funky sour beers. And this is their take on a Berliner Weiss. I, I always tend to love those beers, and this should be a funky interpretation of it. Cheers. Jeff's actually probably gonna really like this because it's kind of restrained. It's not overly funky, it's not overly sour. It's, it's a little sour, you get that good fruit flavor, and it's just really drinkable. There's not a lot of body to it, but you wouldn't expect that from a sour. But it's definitely, you know, that soury, juicy, good Berliner Weiss, but it's just a little bit that and more. It's solid, really solid. All right, guys, so we've tried 12 beers here at Firestone Walker, and uh, we're gonna tell you which ones our favorites were. So, Justin, you wanna go ahead and start? Well, since I'm the furthest down and I had my beers first, I've had a lot more time to think about it. And I come back to one of mine. And I come back to one that I think we all really, really enjoyed. And that's the Inferos. 8.2% rye PA. But the thing is, that's that's where it ends. I mean, I, if you told me it was an 8.2% rye PA and you tasted this, I would have said you they put the wrong label on the wrong beer. Because this is just so different, so unique. It doesn't taste like 8.2%, it doesn't taste like rye. You get tropical fruits, you get grapefruit, it comes in waves. It's it's a fantastic beer that takes you on a journey and it has to be one of my favorites of the day. Well, Jacob. And Justin, you know that uh, they make those in cans right now, right? Right, excuse me. <laughs> so while Justin's going off and getting his <laughs> hoard, uh, I'm gonna have to talk about my next beer, which was really difficult for me to decide because I'm a big fan of Firestone. They make some amazing beers and they're really good at consistency, typically. Um, I really was enjoying Sour Opal. I was surprised um, just because I do get a little bit um, extra judgmental uh, when they throw around the term goose and they're American. Um, but they, it, there's just something just really oaky and delicious about it that I just kept going back to. However, right now, I think maybe because it's winter, I'm in a bit of a more of a barrel aged kick and uh, the anniversary ale is gonna have to pick it for me I just thought it's a great blend uh, it despite being mostly their stout there's a huge amount of like caramel and toffee presence going yeah. on in it mm. and I'm just kind of surprised by how much character they can do just by blending only tiny amounts of some of their other beers yeah. it's still really complex uh, so <coughs> yeah thank you 21 is a good year for you you always want a beer that can drink its own drink. Definitely. And I got to tell you guys, for the ABV on that, it has a lot of barrel character on the nose, but when you dig in, it's actually quite smooth, especially for that ABV. I mean, it's quite drinkable. <laughs> it's dangerous, basically. Well, I'm going to go ahead and talk about my favorite beer now. We tried a lot of awesome beers. That 21st anniversary was phenomenal. The Inferos uh, Leo vs. Ursus series, that was awesome. Uh, but for me, and you guys have probably heard this before if you've watched previous episodes, any time a beer can take me back to a pleasant memory, it's done its job and that's got to be my favorite beer. And today's beer that did that for me was the Cashmere Pale Ale. Um, the second I put my nose to that beer, it instantly took me back to my childhood, smelling fresh grapefruit right off the tree. Oh God, even thinking about it just gets me excited. I want more of it. <laughs> um, it, it has that unfiltered look to it. I probably wouldn't classify it as a hazy, although it pretty much looks like one. Um, but what I will tell you is that told me that whatever comes next, whatever hot variety Firestone Walker is gonna do, for their next batch, I can be all the more excited because 
whatever they did with that recipe is just fire. Love it. So there you have it, guys. We tried all the beers, loved them, and now you've heard our favorites. Then, you know, we, we all just love it, 805. I mean, we're yeah. all lying to you. It's all 805 for us all the time. Yeah, I mean, we didn't review 805, because yeah, 805, man. It's our favorite three numbers. Dial in, man. Dial in. <laughs> hey, have you heard of 805, bro? Have you tried the Hef? Have you tried the Hef, bro? <laughs> all right, guys, so that's gonna do it here at Firestone Walker Brewing in Venice, California. Thanks to everyone that helped us out here. We had an amazing time and even amazing food and great beers. I'm definitely walking away stuffed and I am completely satisfied with beer. What about you guys? <laughs> uh. Yeah. <laughs> I think that says it all. Yeah. Well, if you guys enjoyed this episode, make sure that you give us a thumbs up, like the video, please. Uh, share with your friends if they love beer too and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. If there's a brewery you'd like to see us visit, let us know in the comments below. And until next time, we'll see you again on Let's, Let's Have, Have Some, Some Beer. Beer. Cheers. <laughs>